You wanna say hi to the camera? You wanna say hi to the camera? Are you shy? You being a shy boy. Oh, I gotta get my tea. Hey, my name is Grace. Today, I'm gonna be doing a five-star audit. I, who did I first hear about this from? Hold, please. All right, let's see. I first saw this trend from Riley Marie, uh, but she saw it on Meg with Books. So thank you to those two creators for, thank you Meg for creating this kind of idea. Thank you Riley for posting it so I could see it. I'm excited about this one. This was really, really fun to prep for. And basically what it is, so this is my favorite shelf. And all of my favorites are five stars, but not all of my five stars are favorites. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be looking at my five star reads, books that I loved, finding a common thread through them. So what are tropes that are reoccurring? What are choices by the author, writing styles, that kind of stuff? What is like common in some of my favorite books, in some of my five, in some of my five star reads? And then based on that information, can I extrapolate and find like a new book that I love based on that? So I hope that made sense. So here's the first example. I love a found family. I love Six of Crows duology. Uh, there's another found family book that's very popular that I love, but the author is quite problematic. So I'm going to keep it to myself, but just know there's more than one book on my, on my five star reads that is found family. So I Google, listen to this. I Google books with found family. And the first book I find is American Hippo by Sarah Gailey. What? You may not know this about me. I love hippos. Hippos are my favorite animal. They've been my favorite animal my whole life. When I was wee, when I was a child, I got a pink hippo out of one of those claw machines. I think it was at the YMCA. Got a pink hippo, named it Pippo. Best friend of my entire childhood. My favorite stuffed animal. I think he's at my mom's house. I love hippos. So when I see this cover pop up, I'm like, what is going on in here on this day? I am so excited. And it is basically, it's kind of like the vibes are giving me Western but it's set in an alternate timeline, like an alternate history where hippos, <laughs> where hippos were introduced into the Louisiana marshlands. Well, let me read it for you. Hippos run wild in the marshlands of Louisiana. Winslow Houndstooth gather together a band of outlaws to show them who's boss. <laughs> what? I'm excited. I'm excited for it because apparently it's a great, apparently this author is like a big found family author because the second book I am interested in is also by her. So anyway, found family and hippos, you got me. <laughs> you got me, I'm sold. The next book is Upright Woman Wanted by Sarah Gailey. The future American Southwest is full of bandits, fascists, and queer librarian spies on horseback trying to do the right thing. They'll bring the fight to you. Okay, <laughs> okay, that sounds fun. Another book that I found and have, I've heard of this one. Allison Pages really likes this book. Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. Here's the synopsis. Newly graduated from high school, Mila has aged out of the foster care system. So when she's offered a teaching job and a place to live in an isolated part of Northern California coast, she immediately accepts. Maybe she will finally find a new home, a real home. The farm is a refuge, but it's also haunted by the past and Mila's own memories are starting to rise to the surface. So I think it really explores themes of trauma, um, <clears throat> which I also enjoy reading about. But the fact that my favorite booktuber likes this book and it's found family had to add it to the list. So this is kind of becoming my anticipated reads of 2023 TBR. I am very excited to read all of these books that I found. Also because so many of them I have never heard of before, not from anyone on the internet. And that is so rare for me now because I get all of my, all of the books that are like waiting for me on my TBR shelf, I have basically heard of through a booktuber or a bookstagrammer. So to find books myself 
that I've never heard of that I think are going to be a good fit for me based on books I've loved before. Very exciting. Another thing I really love in books is when they kind of play with form, uh, when they kind of reject the sort of linear novel format and do something different with it. So some books that I love that I've given five stars with this are In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado, Motherhood by Sheila Hetty, House of Leaves by Dan, no, Mark Danielewski, uh, 84 Charing Cross Road by this person. Uh, all like epistolary or just mixed media or just a different, a different way of telling a story. I love that. So I found some exciting ones. First is Ship of Theseus. So a couple reasons this is like a good choice. One, it's, I, it is, it is often compared to House of Leaves, which I had a great time reading. I remember like screaming when that book was done. I was so overwhelmed and overcome with the experience of that book. Two, this book is written by J.J. Abrams, who is erroneously credited first with being the director of a Star Wars film. J.J. Abrams created Lost, and that shall always be his greatest accomplishment. Ship of Theseus is the, chrono the chronicle of two readers finding each other and their deadly struggle with forces beyond their understanding. All within the margins of a book conceived by Lost creator J.J. Abrams and written by the award-winning novelist Doug Dorst. Never heard of Doug Dorst, but you got me with J.J. Abrams. Next, Some of Us Are Very Hungry Now by Andre Perry. The essays in Some of Us Are Very Hungry Now take the form of personal reflection, multiple choice questions, screenplays, and imagined talk show conversations while, travel while traversing the daily minefields of childhood schoolyards and Midwestern dive bars. The impression, of Perry's, the impression of Perry's personal journey is arresting and beguiling while announcing the author's arrival as a formidable American voice. So this sounds great. I read it really discusses themes of like identity and race, but just in a cool way. Another book that I read before but I kind of half-assed it is No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. I know I love Patricia Lockwood because she wrote one of my favorite memoirs, Priest Daddy. And so the first time I listened to this book, uh, the first time I read this book, it was on audiobook. And I just don't really click with audiobooks. It it It's really just got to thread the needle to work for me. And I remember I checked this book out from Libby and I just wasn't I, I, I just sped through it. I was not really reading it. I was not really like committing to it or paying attention. But now that I've read Priest Daddy, I want to reread No One Is Talking About This because it's kind of a weird, it's a weird format. So it plays with like form. It talks about the internet, but then I do remember it like switches halfway through and kind of becomes about something else entirely. So I think that actually might be a great, great book for me. This one is kind of bizarre, but is so accurate. I love non-poetry books written by poets. So somebody who is like primarily a poet that writes a novel or a nonfiction, I eat it up. Some examples, How the Word is Passed by Clint Smith, Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death by Selena Godin, know my name sort of she's not a poet but she is an artist in another modality and know my name is maybe the best book i've ever read uh oh also priest daddy patricia lockwood is a poet and she has written other stuff so there's another reason that no one is talking about this is probably a good choice for me uh but i found some other books that are written by poets kind of thing and I'm really excited about these. The first one is The Mountain Sing by Wen Fon Kwe Mai. Apologies. It is described as vivid, gripping, and steeped in the language and traditions of Vietnam. The Mountain Sing brings to life the human costs of this conflict from the point of view of the Vietnamese people themselves, while showing us the true power of kindness and hope. So I'm sure it'll be devastating and very upsetting. But I have no reason to think it won't be beautiful because when poets write prose, shit slaps. It's so good. Another one has 
this one sounds very promising because the title is so cool. Autobiography of Red by Anne Carson. The award-winning poet reinvents a genre in a stunning work that is both a novel and a poem, both an unconventional recreation of an ancient Greek myth and wholly original coming-of-age story set in the present. So we have playing with form, written by a poet, and including Greek mythology, which is one of my favorite things in the world. So this one is like top of the list. <coughs> a classic that has been at the periphery of my consciousness, but I'm bringing to the forefront because Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin was on a list of kind of like books by poets. And I guess I didn't really know... I didn't know that James Baldwin also wrote poetry just because I've heard so much about his prose and his novels. Um, but this book, one of the descriptions I read is it was like all about love, like platonic love, uh, passionate love, uh, gay love, uh, Philly, like all, like all, all, all the loves, all the different kinds of love. So I think that will be really beautiful. And I know a lot of people, it's their favorite Baldwin. So that's exciting. Murphy, please. Not now. Not now. Next is Salt Houses by Hala Alien. Lyrical and heartbreaking. Salt Houses follows three generations of a Palestinian family and asks us to confront the most devastating of all truths. You can't go home again. So themes of home, I love family unfolding like I love East of Eden I love um Transcendent Kingdom by Yagyasi so this sounds right up my alley as well like it has got multiple elements that are very powerful to me and then oh my gosh I have quite a few in this category because I was so excited about so many of them that I like had to add them to the list so this one is a little bit longer than the others Okay, next is A Ghost in the Throat by Dira Nee Grifa. This one, Irish names, I don't even have a leg to stand on when it comes to trying to pronounce Irish names. So I did have to look this one up. I like a lot of languages I have like rudimentary basic understanding of like pronunciation and like when 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 is from Vietnam it's when like that kind of thing but I had to look this one up Dear and Nee Grifa it's described as a kaleidoscopic blend of memoir auto fiction and literary studies we're playing with form a ghost in the throat moves fluidly between past and present quest and elegy poetry and the people who make it come on that sounds so good Ooh, I'm excited I'm excited I really just want to go ahead and order these books right away, but I'm going to wait. Okay, and then last, a book that, this book I I have heard of before, heard wonderful things. It's Minor Feelings by Kathy Park Hong. Again, didn't know she was a poet, but it makes me so excited for this book. A radically honest work of art, Minor Feelings forms a portrait of one Asian American psyche and of a writer's search to both uncover and speak the truth. So all of those books are not, are non-poetry books. They're not just like straight up poetry written by poets. I'm ready. Another trope, I guess, that I really love is when death is personified. Part of this kind of goes back to my love of Greek mythology or like mythology in general. And so like Hades as like death personified or Tartarus, I guess. <laughs> I guess if you want to get technical, but I love Death Personified. Uh, I feel like Hamnet does this. Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death does this. It's present in a lot of myths that I really enjoy. And so a really, really popular book that I can't believe I haven't read before is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Zusak? And basically, I think death is the narrator and it takes place in Nazi Germany and I, and then books are also a theme. So like, I love books about books, death personified. It just sounds like it's right up my alley. So I'm excited to finally read this. I did not read it growing up and passed by me, but I'm going to read it now. Another book, <clears throat> which is kind of cool because this plays with what I've said before about wanting to diversify like the myths that I read, like going beyond just like Greek and Roman mythology. But Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Death is personified. There's like a god of death <clears throat> that beckons the main character 
in this book. And so that is very exciting for me. And I say it's very exciting because it is very exciting. And I've probably said that about every book that I've mentioned today, but guess what? Guess what, baby? I'm excited. Okay, this next one is like wild. <laughs> it's wild that I was able to find something in common with every five star romance I've ever read. And it's kind of a trope that's like sort of a spoiler, but it's, I, you're, it's always been you. Like, I've always loved you. Like he, like when he has always loved her, I love that. So some of my favorite, actually my new favorite romance of all time, and this is a spoiler for my December wrap up. My new favorite romance of all time is Love Like Farms by BK Borson. So it has, I've always loved you. People we meet on vacation. The Love Hypothesis, Anna Green Gables, and Beach Read all have like, he has always loved her. He's always loved her. And there are a ton of books that fall under this category, like a ton. I started to look on YouTube. There are so many recommendation videos. A lot of indie romances have this, but I found three that I am really excited for and, uh, yeah, I will be reading them post haste. So first is Always Only You by Chloe Lease. I've heard great things about Chloe Lease and I have not gotten around to her books yet, but trust and believe I will be reading it shortly. Uh, Hang the Moon by Alexandria Belfleur and Luna and the Lie by Mariana Zapata. You guys, <laughs> Mariana Zapata. So I have, I've gone on the record before saying, I don't think a a romance needs to be more than like 350 pages like it does not need to be 400 pages like 350 at the most this book Luna and the Lie is like 650 pages for a romance why I'm still gonna read it I'm excited about it but I'm just like what's happening so I don't really know a whole lot about those books other than they have that trope and that's like really all I need to know okay and then finally this one is a tr a literary trend that has really taken over the internet kind of spurred on by legends and lattes but it is cozy fantasy i liked legends and lattes it's not a favorite for me but books that i love that also fall into this category song for the wild bill the starless sea uh, another book on there that i <clears throat> again i it's cozy fantasy it, it has its place in my favorites. And so um, there are so many, there's like Reddit forums and everybody's looking for cozy fantasy right now. I'm not looking exactly for legends and lattes, but I'm looking for a fantasy that's like not high fantasy, not urban fantasy, but something like warmer and more <clears throat> very lyrical and poetic. And so a lot of these, Honestly, I was like, books like The Starless Sea. And the first one that pops up is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Uh, I know there's like a city called Weep and apparently it's written like The Starless Sea. And that's like literally all I know about this book. And I think that's all I need to know. Uh, I didn't know anything about The Starless Sea going into it. And I am so glad that I had that experience. And so I'm going to do the same thing with Strange the Dreamer. Another book, never heard of this book before, but it popped up with like books similar to The Starless Sea. And it's called Gingerbread by Helen Oyeyemi. As the book follows the Lees through encounters with jealousy, ambition, family grudges, work, wealth, and real estate, gingerbread seems to be the only thing that reliably holds a constant value. Endlessly surprising and satisfying, written with Helen Oyeyemi's inimitable, inimitable style and imagination, it is a true feast for the reader. So basically this family makes gingerbread and it affects their life in some way. Like all I know is what I just read to you, but it's, I'm intrigued. I am intrigued and I think it might be a sleeper hit. Another book, very popular, have heard about this one a lot before and it never really dawned on me that it would be, this one I think is technically more like a sci-fi, but this is how you lose the time war. Oh, I don't even know who wrote that. By Amal El Mokhtar and Max Gladstone. Basically two people writing letters to each other across time and they fall in love. I, so epistolary. So there we're working with, we're playing with form again. 
And uh, Mina just recently, like within the past couple months, read this book and she is a, she, it's like one of her favorite books now. So I'm excited to read it. And then last but not least, the another Sylvia Moreno Garcia book, The Beautiful Ones. I know it's like set in like Regency England, but it also has telekinesis. So it's like just a little bit of fantasy. Like that's what I'm asking for is just like a little bit of fantasy in like a warm, atmospheric, beautiful ambiance. Like Monk and the Robot is just a little bit of sci-fi. Like there's a, a sentient robot. But aside from that, it's like about finding meaning in life, you know, and like the Starless Sea has a little bit of fantastical elements, but it's really about whatever that book is about. I don't really know. <clears throat> I don't really know, but I love it. So those are the books that I've discovered from my five star audit. And I, you guys, I truly can't be like more jazzed about it. It's so refreshing to find new books that really seem right up your alley. A lot of the times my experience with booktube recommendation or bookstagram recommendations is like, oh, that sounds interesting. Or like, oh, there are elements of that I can appreciate. But to recognize, okay, these like X, Y, and Z are things that I love. And then through that, finding new books, I guess maybe this is how everybody does it. But to, to whittle down like books that I loved that were like perfect experiences for me, what about them was meaningful and impactful? And where is that present in other books? And then to find books you've never heard of that might also be new favorites. I'm excited. I'm so excited. So if you have or haven't heard of any of these books before, if you're interested in reading them, please let me know down below. I'm excited maybe in a year from now, we'll just call this on top of being my five star audit, my most anticipated most anticipated reads for 2023 uh on top of the 23 books I want to read in 2023 there's a lot of anticipation now I feel very excited about my reading year in 2023 a lot of things are changing for me as far as what I'm looking for in books and what I'm prioritizing in my reading it's just gonna be a great year I just really really feel very positively about how my reading is gonna take off next year and it feels good it feels good and it kind of feels like I felt a couple years ago when I started reading again and it's just like oh my god the world is your oyster and there's just so many incredible books out there and worlds to explore and I'm so excited so that's it thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good day bye